All right, so I thought I'd do a little recording here on how to use this um, Pool Math app. Um, it's put on through Trouble Free Pools. Uh, I think it costs a couple few dollars a year to have the full features of the app, um, but it's pretty good. Um, so when you download the app, you can see I've got this set up for mom's phone, uh, but um, I could go in. Uh, I tapped on Switch Pools. I can go in and add a new pool if I want to, <clears throat> give it a name. Um, tell it what kind of pool it is. So for instance, is it vinyl or is it plaster? Um, am I using bleach or am I using a saltwater generator? Uh, what's the volume of my pool? So if you're not sure, length times width times average depth times 7.5 will give you a rough, rough estimate. Um, what kind of things do you want to track, right? Um, do you want reminders? Uh, what kind of contact info? The um, the zip code is good for weather tracking, so you, especially you can track things like UV. UV plays a huge role in the amount of chlorine uh, that's taken out of your pool, especially during uh, the day. Uh, and then some sharing uh, information there, right? So uh, I've already got mom's pool set up. And so I track um, here. So I track free chlorine. Um, I track pH. Uh, I track... Uh, the TA, total alkalinity, um, the calcium hardness, and CYA, this is probably the most important reading that a lot of people don't track very much, uh, but that's essentially your stabilizer. Um, and so you can see my numbers are a little off right now because I just opened mom's pool and it gives you some indication um, up here at the top as to what they should be. So a number of things I really like about the app. One um, is that if I want to um, log a new test, right? So I test my pool. Um, so I'll click on this little new log at the bottom when I want to do test results. And so a few things I can do. Um, if I want to log actual test results, I'll click there. If I want to log an addition of a chemical, so say I put um, two gallons of chlorine in, right? So I can I can track that there so that I could see later. Uh, any maintenance I've done, any notes, track expenses, right? So a number of things this will do. Typically what I want to do is I want to track test results. <clears throat> and so here, right, so I can track my free chlorine, my combined chlorine, my pH, my total alkalinity, my calcium hardness, um, and I can track um, the CYA. So CYA again is your stabilizer. Right? So all things I can keep track of there. And when you put them in there, um, then you'll click on that little check and it'll save those things. I'm going to click the X first because I didn't really put anything in. Uh, and then it'll save all those numbers here. Right? So free chlorine, uh, I checked it uh, last night before I made a pretty big addition and it was two. Right, so pH was 7.3, uh, TA was 60, calcium hardness 125, and um, stabilizer was uh, 50. Right. Um, the other thing that I really like about this app is it'll give me an an idea of what a chemical addition might do. Right. So if I click here on this little, um, they call it the hamburger icon or whatever, I don't know. Uh, but you click on that, um, and if you notice here's the effects of adding, right? So let's say for mom's pool, which I've got as about 32,000 gallons, if I want to know what's the effects of adding uh, bleach that is 10%, and let's say I want to add um, one gallon to it. I don't know why it won't let me... Uh, some reason this um, oh there we go and so when I say I want to add one gallon it tells me that it would raise the free chlorine by three parts per million and it will raise the salt level by five parts per million right and so I can go in and change this so let's say I'm not using bleach let's say I'm using uh, trichlor right and I want to know what's the effects of adding one pound of trichlor Right, well, that would raise my free chlorine by three. Um, CYA or the stabilizer, it raised by two. Again, that's something most people don't track. Um, 
a lot of people, if you find yourself keeping your chlorine levels as they should be, uh, but then you end up with an algal outbreak, <clears throat> um, good chance your stabilizer levels are, are too high. Um, and it essentially makes your chlorine not as effective at that same uh, level. So it's something you should keep uh, uh, track of. Uh, maybe you use dichlor, right? So if I use dichlor, I could see um, what would one pound, right, of dichlor do. Uh, maybe I use um, kind of the old something like uh, cow hypo right so cow hypo is the what a granular chlorine that a lot of people use uh, and it depends on the percentage right so let's say I had a 65 percent uh, and I wanted to add one pound of that right tells you what your free, free chlorine and these are estimates right so you would want to add this let it mix in and then check one thing you might ask is how do I know, right? How do I know if it's trichlor or dichlor or whatever? Um, it doesn't typically say those things. So if you go to Walmart and you buy your chemicals, or even if you go to a pool store and you buy your chemicals, they're typically not named trichlor or dichlor or cow hypo. They've got some trade name to them, but if you look at the bottom of it, it'll tell you whether it's trichlor or dichlor or what percentage of cow hypo or whatever. Um, even on the bleach that I purchase, so I use almost exclusively. Uh, uh, liquid bleach for mom's pool um, it'll tell you the percentage right so it's 10% right? um, and so based on that I can put those numbers in and it'll it'll tell me something right but it lets you keep keep all sorts of um, the other thing I like here is the acid so sometimes I have to add acid to mom's pool to get the pH uh, back down right to where it needs to be and so you can you can see what the effects of that would be uh, by adding those things. So for instance, if I looked at the muriatic acid, right, and I wanted to add a gallon of it, then I could see about how much that would change my pH. And then also it would tell you how much it would lower uh, the total alkalinity there too. Uh, so just a number of things. Um, a lot of times people around here are adding baking soda and things of that nature. But just, um, there's algae side, right? So if I wanted to add, um, I don't know, uh, 12 ounces of algae side, right? So no significant change in water chemistry, right? And so that's all in the effects of adding. And I think that's just a, a great uh, tool to have there. Um, the other thing is this pool school thing. Uh, which will open in a different browser. And that'll take you to Trouble Free Pools, right? And so Trouble Free Pools is essentially a forum. Um, and I can't recommend spending enough time here. Uh, I mean, it's just invaluable. I've learned so much about pool chemistry and taking care of swimming pools uh, through this that it, it's just um, it's just unreal, right? I mean, it's 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 clued me in on so many things and it's probably saved me uh, a good amount of money too because I don't feel like I'm in the dark about what I'm doing uh, with uh, my pool right um, the other thing is so any of these individual things you can click on so for instance if I want to if I want to touch on the free chlorine there right and so it'll open this up uh, and so a number of things you see here right so it tells me what I've recorded my stabilizer to be right which is 50 it tells me what my chlorine range should be based on that stabilizer level. Um, it tells me what my current current level is and what my target is. Uh, and then based on that, it'll tell me how much I should add. Right. So if I'm using bleach at 10% and I want my free chlorine to go from 2 to 6, then I need to add a little over a gallon. Right. Um, if I'm using something else, right, so maybe I'm using trichlor, then uh, I need to add a little over a pound of trichlor to get my, my chlorine up. The other thing it'll do is um, it'll tell me, so if I need if I need to shock, right, um, they call it a slam method, right, so shock level and maintain. Uh, so if you have algae in your pool, then you need to slam your pool, right, and so 
um, if you just click on that little button there, right, it'll increase your target free chlorine levels to where it should be and where you should maintain it throughout that slam, right? So it should be 20, uh, and then you come down here and it'll tell you how much you need to add of trichlor or how much you need to add of bleach, right, in order to maintain uh, that slam level for a particular amount of time, right? And again, that's to, to that's to, they call it slam in trouble free pools, you might would call it shock. So you maintain that shock level for uh, as long as it takes to get rid of uh, the algae and things uh, in your pool. All right, so that's free chlorine, right? If I go to pH, right, it'll also tell me there for uh, pH uh, what I might be able to do. So let's say that my current pH was a six. Right, so then it would tell me that I would need to add 31 pounds of uh, soda ash, or let me go to, um, I was using maybe borax, right, 61 pounds, right? So um, if my, um, let's say my pH was an 8, right, so notice it defaults to the muriatic acid. 29% uh, there, and it tells me I need to add about a quart and two cups to get it to where uh, I need to be, right? So pretty helpful there. Um, total alkalinity, right? So again, it'll tell you it'll tell you the the uh, same thing, right? So <clears throat> if my total alkalinity is 60 and I want it to be 70, right? Then I need to add about four pounds of baking soda to do that. Baking soda is good at alkalinity. Baking soda itself a lot of baking soda itself won't change pH a whole lot. It'll change it a little bit, um, but not much, right? You should use, um, there, there are better things out there to uh, change pH than baking soda, right? Um, more efficient things, I should say. Okay. Uh, calcium hardness, right? So here it says current level is 125, targets uh, 175. So depending on what I want to add there too, right? So if I want to add calcium chloride instead, right, I would need to add about 15 pounds uh, to get that up. Um, calcium hardness is not something I worry a whole lot about, and I don't want it super high because uh, then that's when you start to get deposits on things. Right? And then, uh, did I hit the other? Yeah. And then for stabilizer, right? Um, again, ideal range 40 to 50. So notice mine's 50. Um, and so the thing about, the thing most people don't understand about stabilizer is for most types of chlorine, so if you're using trichlor, dichlor, uh, or tablets, you're adding stabilizer. Um, so if you've been using those things for long periods of time and you haven't checked your stabilizer level, you need to. Um, the only things that, do, that don't really add stabilizer is uh, the liquid chlorine uh, or calhypo. Right, those things are not uh, stabilized, so to speak. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, if your stabilizer is where you want it, then you don't want to be adding more stabilized chlorine to it unless you're doing a whole lot of water additions to it. Right? Um, it's just not, uh, not a good idea. It, it, it causes the same level of chlorine to be less effective. Right? So if you had four parts per million um, at you know, a CYA of 40, that wouldn't that would be less effective if your CYA was 80, much less effective, right? So you have to, you should really pay attention to those things, right? Um, and of course, if CYA is low, you can just add more. If CYA is high, the only way to, to change it really is to to drain some water. So right, so let's say, let's say my CYA was 80, right? Well, I think it already said that at 50. I just didn't pay attention, right? So notice my CYA is 50, and it's saying my target is 40. So it's just telling me to drain and refill, right? Um, let's say my CYA was 20, right? So say it's low. Um, then it's telling me I need to add about five pounds of uh, dry stabilizer, right? Which I've never seen liquid stabilizer. I'm sure it's out there. Yeah. Um, but again, just a, just an absolutely um, really nice app. Uh, and where most people would spend their time is new log, test results, uh, add your test results, and then click the check at the top to save those. Right? Uh, but I encourage it.
Um, I just again I can't speak highly enough um, of the app uh, and what it can do. Right, it'll keep your logs too. Right, so I clicked on this little log over here, uh, and it'll tell you when you tested, um, how long ago you tested, what your results were. Right, all of that. Right, so it's a um, really good app to use. I encourage it.